Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, and the opportunity to take you through the Azure Minerals story and, and our Andover project in particular. As it says there, it's the project that keeps on delivering. We've had it for two years. Initially, because of the, uh, the nickel and copper sulphide potential, uh, we've, we've now taken that through to resource stage and development studies. And very recently, as in uh, over the last couple of days, we've announced the uh, discovery of some uh, very high-grade lithium mineralisation as well on that project. Usual disclaimer and statements, which can be found on our website, which you can read at your leisure. I do <clears throat> acknowledge the traditional owners very strongly for the for land up there at, at uh, in the Pilbara on which we operate. They are. It's very important that we have that strong relationship with them. We've spent most of the last two years building that relationship, and and everything so far has been going really well. A very positive relationship, and it's important that we keep that going for the uh, for the benefit of all the stakeholders in the company and in our project. Corporately, a quick snapshot there is that uh, market cap, uh, when I did this slide on Monday, we had a market cap of 70 million. Uh, yesterday it went through a $100 million market cap. It's back down around $90 million at the moment. So uh, in a good position there. As far as cash goes, at the end of the last quarter, we had about $10 million in the bank. Since then, since that was reported, we received a payment of $4 million from sale of our Mexican assets. Um, and so, and then we've been obviously spending money over the last few months as well. So we're sitting there with about $8 million in the bank at the moment. Two largest shareholders, German investment fund Deutsche Balaton and the Creasy Group, Mark Creasy, very famous West Australian uh, prospector, highly successful, uh, sitting there with 16% as was a result of selling into Azure one of his uh, nickel projects. And that is the Andover project. So we bought the 60% ownership from Creasy for shares in our company. In July of uh, 2020, we were on the ground drilling in October of 2020, so that's exactly two years ago. We've been drilling non-stop with diamond drilling, and uh, we've had incredible success finding uh, and identifying and uh, defining to resource status uh, this uh, nickel and copper sulphide mineralisation. And then as a result of the more regional exploration that we were doing for the nickel, we also identified outcropping pegmatites. We identified that they contain spodumene, which is a lithium-rich mineral, and uh, last week and then yesterday we put out some announcements on that and I'll talk about that in a second. And we have a, a very large pipeline of projects going forward. What we're looking at doing on the end of a project, it's a bit over 100 square kilometres of land, but it is starting to look like we've, we're developing a new mineral province. It's, in particular, it's a nickel province. It's a new nickel province in Western Australia. And, and the exploration that we've been doing it has identified at least four deposits plus a, a number of other very high, highly prospective areas that we're currently drilling. So we've implemented a dual pathway strategy for the nickel where we, we undertake exploration and resource definition drilling. At the same time, we're running development studies into building a, and operating a nickel mine there. It's likely it will be some a form of hub and spoke top operation, which a hub and spoke is you have a centralised processing facility which is fed by uh, ore from several mines that would be surrounding it. So we've identified a number of deposits and, and it's looking very positive to have several developing mines feeding into a central processing facility. It's important that you have a really good team and, uh, and we do. We were able to, uh, by acquiring this project in the middle of 2020, uh, we were able to then staff up very quickly in a period in which there was a downturn in the industry. You know, post uh, uh, the, the identification of COVID, everything went in a bit of a slump for about six months. In the middle of that slump, we acquired the project and we acquired people. We employed a really good team. And this team has spent a lot of time, they are dedicated to the nickel story on, and, and the identification of nickel deposits on Andover. And uh, because of that focus, they've been able to get a really strong understanding of all of the controls of the mineralisation and have been able to predict where to find mineralisation and then drill it and actually do confirm that that mineralisation is there. So this is <clears throat> typical old school boots on the ground exploration. Over 80% of our project area is outcropping rock. So it's basement rock that's sticking out of the ground. There's no soil cover and there's very little vegetation cover. So with all of this outcropping rock, you can go out on the ground and you do geological mapping. And that's what we do. Firstly, it's geological mapping and then rock chip sampling of, of uh, 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 prospective looking outcrops. And you can see there, for example, the top photograph, there's one of our young geologists sampling an outcropping pegmatite. Um, got a chunk of it here, 
This was one of the ones we announced yesterday, 3.3 per cent lithium oxide, sent the share price running from 21 to 36 cents. Um, this, these pegmatites are literally outcropping throughout the project area. Uh, the lower left hand photograph there shows some of the copper mineralisation that's out, sticking out of the ground at surface. Very visible, it's bright green, bright blue. Um, and then on the lower right side, you've got the nickel-rich gossons, which are represent representing the uh, massive nickel sulphides at depth, which have been weathered and oxidised, and at surface they appear as these brown ironstones. All of these types of outcrops are sticking out of the ground in the Andover project. We're located only five kilometres south of the town of Roeburn. We've got a highway that runs through the project area. We've got roads, power lines, etc. No one has been out on the ground cracking these rocks and there's been people prospecting in the Pilbara for 50 or 60 years, these outcropping, zones of outcropping mineralisation stick out of the ground and they have never been identified previously. It's, it's quite remarkable that we should still have these opportunities available to us here in Western Australia. So typically it's the mapping to identify geology, sampling to identify favourable geochemistry, follow it up with uh, geophysic, geophysical surveys and then diamond drilling. And this is a, an aerial image, an aerial photograph of the project area. In blue are the three exploration licences that uh, form our project area, about 108 square kilometres in there. You can see the, so the, the, in the central part, the mountainous looking material, that, that's, that's the outcropping, mineral, outcropping rocks, and within that we get the mineralisation sticking out of the ground as well. The yellow stars are the identified nickel prospects where we have either drilled or we're about to be drilling. Lower left hand side you've got Ridgeline and Andover, they're the two deposits which have been drilled to date. Uh, we have a resource announced for Andover, we have a resource coming for Ridgeline very quickly and um, we're currently drilling or planning to drill the rest of those yellow stars over the over coming weeks and months. And sticking out of the ground in red is the pegmatites that we've been mapping and sampling over the last 12 months. Um, and within those uh, outcropping pegmatites, we're finding this lithium-rich mineralisation. And it's, it's visible at surface as, as our geologists have been able to identify the particular mineral spodumene that contains most of it. And there are some cross picks on there that you can see on the, uh, the right-hand side of the image there. Those are old mines that were worked back in the 1950s and 1960s by small-scale artisanal miners, and they were chasing tin tantalum, etc., and they were just throwing this uh, lithium-rich material off to one side while they extracted the other minerals. So there actually has been a little bit of historical work on the far right-hand side, particularly for tin, and, and it's in those areas we're finding really good examples of the lithium-rich material. Um, if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see faded out behind it is the, the purple and the green. Those are the mafic and ultramafic rocks that form the Andover complex that contains the nickel. And in red are those pegmatites that we've been sampling. And there on the, on the screen there are some of the assay grades that we've been getting from our lithium sampling. They're very high grades sticking out of the ground at surface. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, that exploration program is continuing and, uh, and we'll be drilling on the ground on those pegmatites as soon as we receive our, the appropriate approvals. So originally we went in there into Andover for the nickel potential and that nickel, the nickel and copper sulphide potential is huge. We are, it is still very much our main focus. Um, the lithium is, is good, it's interesting, and we will do work on that, but the nickel is the main game. And the first of the deposits we drilled out was Andover, a bit over four and a half million tonnes of about 1.4% uh, nickel equivalent, containing about 75,000 tonnes in total of, of metal, combined metal tonnes. A very robust resource, over 80% is, is included in the indicated resource category. Um, this ore body, lends itself to an underground mining operation for all sorts of reasons um, and we are processing this and, and doing the development studies to uh, employ an underground mining method to extract this mineralisation. Right next door to it is one called Ridgeline. So on the right hand side of the photograph we've got Andover with the, uh, the 50 odd thousand tonnes of, of contained nickel, 21,000 tonnes of copper etc. 200 metres to the west, we have the Ridgeline deposit, which we've completed the resource drill out phase now, and it is now in the mineral resource estimation stage. The, the resource should be ready for publication sometime in the uh, early to mid part of the first quarter of next year. It's only 200 metres from Andover, but it's blind at surface. This is the only example of nickel mineralisation we've identified and drilled to date, which does not stick out of the ground. We found it through doing geophysics. Some two very high grade massive sulphide shoots, massive nickel and copper sulphides. 
Uh, and this is what some of the drill core looks like. This is much higher grade than what we're seeing next door at the Andover deposit. So this particular hole, 6.3 metres at 3.6 per cent nickel. And we drilled and we sampled this particular drill hole at half metre intervals to get some idea of the, uh, understand the variability of the nickel within there. And as you can see, as we, in the top part of the hole we went into, it's 2.2 per cent. And then we went into a whole series of samples running 3% 3, 3 up to nearly 5% nickel. So very consistent grades, high grades, and it's likely that when the resource comes out, this particular deposit will have a higher grade than what the next door neighbour at, uh, at Andover does, only a couple of hundred metres away. So literally we, literally, we are only scratching the surface at Andover, over 100 square kilometres of land, and we've been really focused on a few areas which have got outcropping nickels, but now we are spreading our vision wider. So we're not only looking for outcropping and finding outcropping examples of nickel and copper, we're finding outcropping pegmatites hosting lithium as well. So there's a lot of work going un, being un, undergone on the project area at the moment, and uh, we see ourselves being here for a very long time, drilling out these resources, while at the same time undertaking the development studies to build a mine. So we see this as a project, as I said, with a dual pathway, we can actually carry out the exploration and resource definition drilling on those nickel projects and then also onto, into the lithium as well, while at the same time we're undertaking all of this component studies that form a, firstly a scoping study, which is likely to be released in the first quarter of next year, and then the, uh, uh, in, through into a feasibility study and then hopefully if all, everything is positive to actually building a mining and processing operation for nickel on the Andover project. Uh, so the, the project is coming along really nicely. The important part of developing projects these days is to have uh, a proper environmental and social licence to operate and governance procedures put in place. We are doing that. We, we are bringing in the local community so they understand that what we're doing. We, our intention is to use absolute best practice in, in, in our exploration stage, the development stage and into the mining stage as well. And we'll do everything we can to ensure that all the stakeholders, not only shareholders in the company but also the local people and the local communities do benefit as well. And at the end of the day we want to be able to produce nickel which can be, has that traceability from the mine site all the way through to the BMW buyer who has a battery in, a, in his car in Europe. That traceability is very important for, uh, for your ESG uh, credentials going forward. So that's the, uh, that's the story of uh, Andover Dual Pathway. We're, we're successfully tracking along that as well. The company's in a very strong position. We, we're financially well off at the moment. We've got a really good team in place. And we see this as a, as a project that really has the opportunity to go forward in leaps and bounds. The last two years has been fantastic. We see the next couple of years as being even better. Um, and as I was, uh, was mentioned to me uh, yesterday, if you happen to have a Tesla car and you drive it up to Andover and you throw a cable on the ground, you'll be able to charge your batteries up there with all the battery metals, the nickel, the copper, the cobalt and the lithium that we have on our ground. Um, so that, that's the story of Andover. It's in a position to to really go forward. The company's very strong, great team in place, well, well funded and, and a project that looks like it's going to go all the way through to mining. Thank you very much.